Hi everyone, this is Prashant here. So I'm. Uh, so first of all, before we begin, you know, uh, I would just like to know that uh, everybody can hear me well. So if there are any issues or any challenges, uh, we have uh, the Snapper team here. So we have Shihaz, we have Nishad, so Kamlesh, uh, Madhuri, Naresh, and anyone, and you can reach out to them. And also you can post all your queries, all your doubts. Uh, in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer. So we're gonna uh, have uh, or maintain the quick, uh, you know, uh, decorum, right? So I would expect you to everybody to be on the mute uh, and raise your hands if you have any other doubts or any other queries, right? Uh, and also please kindly switch off your videos so we can prevent uh, any of those uh, bandwidth issues. So we're going to begin our webinar in just uh, five minutes. Let us just wait, uh, you know, other friends are joining today. So guys, uh, you know, before we begin, why don't we start with a quick, uh, you know, uh, introduction or a background about yourself and what you are looking forward uh, as a takeaway from this webinar. So you could just probably raise your hand and, you know, I can unmute you guys and we can have a chat because I'm really keen to drive this webinar uh, from a very, very uh, simple perspective where you all can understand, where we all can connect because I'm going to discuss a very important topic uh, about cybersecurity uh, and the kind of uh, impact it is basically uh, going to have uh, in today's internet world. I believe that, you know, uh, internet hacks and all of that is one of the biggest threat and it would uh, actually uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, create massive issues down the line. And I believe fundamentally that blockchain uh, can, you know, save the world and save the internet and create a better web uh, for tomorrow. So thank you so much, guys, uh, for tuning in today. And I'm Prashant. I'm your co-founder of Snapper Future Tech and also Indian Blockchain Institute. And I have been... Uh, in the blockchain and in the cryptocurrency space for about four, four years. Uh, started my journey as an entrepreneur uh, quite early, moved from AI to, you know, blockchain. So you could just, uh, you know, use our chat box quite well and just share what you're looking forward to kind of, you know, uh, take away or know from this webinar. Hi, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Thanks, Maharaj, for joining in Dubai. And it is really great to know that you are already embracing blockchain and working as a project lead. Thank you so much. I'll be, uh, you know, excited if we have some time, excited to hear about your success story and how you have been driving the blockchain initiative at your organization and what kind of benefit and the value you are able to deliver uh, to your stakeholders and to your ecosystem. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining in and thank you, uh, everyone else. Yeah. Anybody else who wants to share something? Uh, so we have from Snapper team, we have uh, Shehaz, we have uh, Nishad, we have Kamlesh. So you guys can just reach out to them for any other doubts or any other queries uh, in between if I'm, you know, not able to take up your questions. So Shehaz will take up the questions uh, coming from the chat and he'll be, uh, you know, taking it up and I'll be the one who will be answering, right? Okay, uh, so I hope you all can uh, see my machine and we're going to begin the webinar now. Okay, guys, so good evening, good afternoon uh, and good morning to our friends who are joining in from US or any other parts of the world. Okay, so we see we have quite a few uh, other friends who don't know anything about blockchain, right? So I'm going to start with a very basics about uh, why do we need blockchain? What is the importance of blockchain? And basically how blockchain works at a very, very simple level. So guys, uh, just, you know, uh, keep in mind that this is a very, very uh, basic level or an introductory level uh, session kind of I'm going to take um, about blockchain, right? It's a very, very complex technology. We need to go deep dive. But I can really understand you might have, you know, a lot of doubts and a lot of queries. Uh, 
uh, and as you know, a snapper and enterprise blockchain company, we keep on doing a lot of these webinars. We keep on doing a lot of these uh, virtual sessions. Uh, you know, for every part, every so for others to be the part of this community and to learn blockchain, right? So, uh, you know, just apologies in advance if you know I might be not able to answer your questions uh, in detail in interest of time and keeping in interest uh, of others as well, right? So, thank you so much. So, uh, the today's agenda. Linda, as you all know, is uh, blockchain uh, in cybersecurity. And I'm going to talk about an amazing case study of a world's largest shipping company, which actually got hacked and uh, how did they implement it, blockchain and what kind of benefits they actually got out of this, right? And as just to, you know, set up the context, right? We all have been reading news uh, recently, uh, companies like Zoom were hacked, there, there, they have been compromised. We know scams like Cambridge uh, Analytica, and we know a lot of other hacks which have been happening now and then. Every big companies, right, such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, any of these big companies, you name it, uh, you know, they are basically are controlling and playing with users' privacy all around the world. And I believe, and we believe at Snapper that with blockchain, we can create an internet of value. We can create an internet where everybody can kind of, you know, uh, be the owner of their own data and they would know with whom the data should be shared and they would determine how the data to be used by every participant across an ecosystem. And keeping that vision in mind, we started Snapper and uh, uh, Snapper is basically uh, now is part of the US-based company, which is called NM Tech Capital. Under our umbrella, right, we have complete expertise in technologies like AI, blockchain, cloud, big data, IoT. We have been working from fortune companies uh, to startups to a lot of governments uh, around the, uh, in India. And uh, also our case studies, which was blockchain land records was also successfully published by Howard Business Review and a lot of uh, Ivy League and uh, other, uh, you know, amazing publications. So we are really thankful to everyone for being a part of this journey and, you know, being with Snapper always. So guys, right. So let me start with a problem statement. Uh, Okay, thank you Manish for joining in here and really good to know that you are already a blockchain developer. So would be good Manish if you can also on the chat just can kind of, you know, uh, answer some of the queries, some of the doubts, uh, you know, uh, raised by our community members, that would be really awesome. So it's really awesome to see that we have a lot of uh, expert members and expert people from community <laughs> and uh, I would just expect to kind of just uh, mute yourself. So, okay. So guys, right? So the biggest question is, why do we need blockchain, right? Why did this idea of having a decentralization, why having this idea of, uh, you know, a cryptocurrency or a distributed database or a distributed ledger technology begin, right? So let us try to, you know, understand from a very ground level perspective that what is the biggest problem, right? Today's, uh, you know, if you think of a big enterprise, right? Just let's let's just think of a simple example of a bank. Uh, in today's scenario, right? If I have to move money from India to the US, we have to understand that there are multiple parties involved. So they might be, they might be a center bank, receivers bank, and then you have a SWIFT, and then you have a custodian, and then you have master. And then you have other service providers or intermediaries, basically, right? So when you have such complex environment and such complex parties, right? The biggest challenge is, you know, reconciliation. So all these enterprises, all these companies, do they use, uh, you know, technologies like ERPs and Cybersecurity. These guys are actually not, you know, connected with each other. Meaning, they work in cycles. Parties A records are not connected to party B. Party B records are not connected with party C, and uh, so on. Right. So this way actually becomes really difficult to track assets. And in today's world, this internet-driven world, in this knowledgeable driven world, we all understand that data is asset, right? 
So uh, just hold on, guys. Just kind of uh, go back from here and just go. So it just becomes okay, fine. Okay. okay, thanks. Great. So, uh, so you know, I'm going to also take some pause in between. Uh, so we can have a uh, interactive Q and A session, and we could actually chat with each other, right? Okay. So, guys, are you all able to hear me well, right? So, okay, perfect. Thanks. So, uh, I'm just gonna unmute my colleagues, right? So they could just probably uh, intervene whenever they're wired and kind of take this up. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Okay, guys. So uh, monitoring data and how this data flows from one enterprise to other enterprises actually very, very critical. And though we have ERP systems, they still actually kind of, you know, work in silos like, uh, you know, banks A record might not be connected with banks B record and all these intermediaries are actually not connected with each other. Hence, in today's world, though we have the best of the technologies, it is very difficult to monitor assets and their transfers. But you guys might can think, right? I mean, why do we actually kind of, you know, need blockchain here, right? This could be done with any other traditional technologies and all of that. But guys, let me tell you, one of the biggest issues with every companies and biggest issues with every enterprise is actually trust. Uh, and with blockchain, one is actually able to establish trust in an autonomous way using data. And all the data which is moving from party A to party B to party C all across the ecosystem is actually moving in an encrypted manner. I mean, just, you know, I hope you can, you are able to recollect when I told that using technologies like blockchain, everybody would be in control of their own data. They would determine how the data should flow from participants to participants and from, you know, in, an, uh, in a very big internet ecosystem. And, you know, not only that, right, if, uh, if you know, because of this trust issues, uh, people and the banks and, you know, a lot of enterprises, they actually rely on middlemen, right? So middlemen such as, you know, probably, uh, you know, a swift to establish trust, right? In an international remittance business model, the key business model or a key job of swift is to actually establish trust. They're going to make sure that the balances are there on both the sides. They're going to make sure the compliance and everything are met. But if we use blockchain, this all could be done in an autonomous way because we are creating a decentralized network. We are creating a peer-to-peer -peer network where we are purely relying on data to establish trust. So it is a technology which is purely based on data computing. And every once in a while, you know, such technologies comes along and it changes everything. So blockchain is actually, you know, being a data infrastructure technology, it is actually forming a backbone for all other technologies like AI, IoT, cloud, uh, and you know, a lot of other applications, right? So we could actually think of a scenario uh, where you could actually implement blockchain uh, uh, in, you know, for example, a self-driving car, right? You have four self-driving cars. You have cars of, you know, Mercedes, Tesla, Ferrari, uh, and, you know, maybe some other Tata, right? So currently, if these guys, you know, are basically using their own self-driving systems or they are basically running them, uh, you know, cars in their own cloud, right? It becomes quite difficult because sensors cannot, you know, penetrate uh, across and, you know, like, for example, if there's a crossing, right, a sensor cannot actually penetrate across a building. So they need a solution or they need a uniform platform where they could map the coordinates of all these cars. And one of the biggest challenges which they're going to face is actually trust. Why? Because of the fact that why would a Mercedes say that I should give my access to Tata? Why would a Tata say that I should give my access to Mercedes? Right? You know, why would a Mercedes would say I should give my access to Ferrari? Right? Because the chances are that a other participant or a other party can actually use this data or the leverage this data or kind of you know manipulate it or kind of you know misuse it. And also there is also a lot of confident confidentiality issue. There is also issues of security. If any of these participants are hacked, what is gonna happen? Because the entire ecosystem would come down. So hence blockchain shares and a trusted ledger is a solution. So blockchain in a very, very simple terms is a technology of trust which is based on a peer-to-peer -peer network where 
everybody is sharing a same copy of a data so this is also called a distributed ledger technology right so or distributed data technology meaning all the participants are actually coming together to form a business network or to form a network which is actually not controlled by anyone but it is autonomously controlled by using consensus so by consensus what i mean is consensus are typically a set of rules set of records uh, are basically set of rules and regulations on how this network should operate so we come together and we create a consensus that you know this network is going to operate in x way y way and z way and the entire blockchain is going to operate by themselves without a control of this third party hence we are creating a decentralized internet where all the participants are actually controlling their data they would determine how this data should flow and this is coming together in a structure which we call block and a chain hence all these uh, technology or this in blockchain we are creating a data blocks where the data is stored whenever a transaction is happening and every block is actually carrying a reference from its previous block hence if anybody tries to kind of you know manipulate the network or something like that they have to actually change the entire blockchain which is quite impossible because you know the network is going to grow bigger and bigger with every single data coming onto the picture right hence if any person would want to you know kind of manipulate the data it's almost uh, next to impossible because they're going to require a brute force computing typically or a computing uh, or actually need to go back to the genesis block which is the first block in the blockchain and modify all the data because every data is actually carrying the trail or every block is actually carrying the trail of all other previous blocks right hence you know it would allow all the participants to see the data in actually in a much more transparent way and hence you know using blockchain business can actually facilitate the transfer of assets through much much easier and transparent way so what we are doing with blockchain right we are creating a decentralized business network where there is participants and where there is contracts so blockchain also has this unique feature of smart contracts so we can just put in all the parameters of a contract like uh, you know for an example that you know if a good is shipped from a point a to a point b and we receive that data from a shipping company through an api the money or should be released from an escrow independently this way we are re reducing the dependencies from third parties to actually rely and we have seen you know uh, in case of insurance right where a lot of people are actually not paid Uh, uh insurance uh, and a lot of people are actually try to do a lot of insurance frauds they have been billions and hundreds of billions of dollars of insurance frauds which happens every year and why it happens right because of some data manipulation and we are not able to get that data or verify that data at source itself so hence with blockchain and smart contracts we could remove all these uh you know trust issues from centralized bodies and we could just give it purely on the data rely purely on the computer codes to actually execute and verify the transactions and hence we can also monitor all the flow of the assets so by assets what is exactly your assets in an internet world is your data so typically whenever you are moving money or when you are moving a contracts you are actually moving a piece of data which is very very critical hence everybody is coming together to create a business network with all the participants driven by a contract driven by the rules driven by the consensus and also you could monitor all the assets right hence all the transactions so every participant across the ecosystem is actually sharing the same copy of data hence what this is offering this is offering one connected ecosystem resulting in higher efficiency all the participants are actually sharing the same copy of a data and at the same time since all this participants are actually acting as a node and they would also provide a support to other participants in a business network to kind of you know uh, facilitate the transaction so let's say in a traditional scenario right uh, if any of the uh, so let's say for example we use today banks right so let's say if axis bank is down and you want to send money to the xbfc bank we won't be able to process it right because of a fact that you know axis bank has all the records and all the ledgers 
right? But with blockchain, since it's a peer-to-peer network, there is no network downtime. Meaning, since every participant is sharing the same copy of a data across, I could just immediately retrieve the data from my other peers just by verifying my identity on a network. So, in an internet world, you all you have is typically a digital identity right so your digital identity is your user id and password and by putting that you could just get access to your data and you could verify yourself and can retrieve the data from your peers it's purely a peer-to-peer network and it has a consensus uh, driven by a smart contract as i give you an example that you don't have to rely on any more intermediaries it would result in this intermediations and most important feature of a blockchain is that immutability Meaning once the transactions are actually uh, pushed to the system or entered into the system, it has a timestamp. Uh, so timestamp is basically when was the transactions was, you know, initiated at the source. So you could basically cannot alter the data once the system or uh, once the data enters into the system. So you might think, hey, Prashant, what if, you know, if it is immutable, right? How uh, and if I put a wrong data, how am I going to change it? So the thing is, in a blockchain, you take a reference of that previous data and then create a new transaction or a new data on the top of that. So that is how we are also keeping the record of all the transactions. So that is just to make sure that every data is actually, uh, you know, shared uh, in a manner by all the participants. And if there is any such events where you might need to go and verify such transactions, you could verify it. Uh, And most importantly, it's a distributed ledger technology hence serves as a single source of truth so i'll be open to take questions now only about blockchain and you know if you have any other doubts or any other queries right i would be glad to help so okay great so you guys have any other doubts or uh, any other queries uh, she has Hey, Shias, uh, do we have any doubts or any queries? Yeah, we do have one yeah. doubt in particular, which everyone is asking is about first thing, what is cryptocurrency? Okay. Okay. Second, uh, first, I think you should answer that. What is cryptocurrency? Okay. So, uh, okay. That's quite a question, which is actually uh, off, uh, off our... Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, cryptocurrency is... As the terminology suggests, crypto, cryptographically uh, uh, protected or a cryptographically created data. So uh, cryptocurrency is again, uh, is actually operated on a technology blockchain. Hence, cryptocurrency is not blockchain, but cryptocurrency is a part of blockchain. And uh, with cryptocurrencies, we are actually able to move money from me to you without any banks, without any governments. It's purely a decentralized way of moving money, a decentralized way of actually moving a piece of data from one party to another party. So essentially, your cryptocurrency need not to be only money, but mostly it is used as money, but it can also be used uh, as a piece of data. So cryptocurrency in a lot of scenarios is actually used to kind of create a token or to kind of create a currency for respective communities. But again, you know, uh, cryptocurrency is altogether a totally different topic. So uh, we're going to have a separate session uh, about cryptocurrencies. In fact, we have a detailed uh, uh, course on, uh, you know, our website, IndianBlockchainInstitute.com on cryptocurrencies. And I would actually suggest you to sign up for that because I have to take you a way step back and, you know, discuss about this, which would be absolutely off the topic. So I would like to particularly think, uh, you know, stick to today's agenda on blockchain and cybersecurity. Yeah. Any other questions, Shaz? Yeah, everyone is eager when you'll step into cybersecurity part. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, blockchain typically can be used uh, across a lot of solutions. So you could implement blockchain in a scenario where you have multiple stakeholders, multiple participants, you have multiple data points and, you know, trust with respect to the data and the security is a major challenge. So, guys, one of the key things which we need to, you know, remember when we actually move into blockchain. So, every single data, whichever is generated from the source and goes into the system or onto the blockchain network is actually encrypted. So, is encrypted by something is like a lock and key to protect your data. So, the keys are basically with the original generator or the original source of the data. And 
and whenever a data is actually entered into the system, it is gone in an encrypted manner. Hence, any participant who is not authorized to kind of see that data uh, won't be able to see it. So this is one of the key important features that the encryption is built in. If you take a step back and, uh, you know, or try to kind of, you know, just look at the quick overview on what has happened around the internet, right? So this data is actually taken from a lot of different sources from Gartner to PWCs to Deloitte and, you know, a lot of other reports, right? So every single computer chip which has been manufactured in the last 20 years contains some kind of fundamental security flaw. I mean, I don't know if you have been following, uh, you know, internet and all of that, right? They have been, uh, you know, about almost a couple of years back in 2018, right? Huawei's uh, CFO was actually arrested in, uh, in Canada on the order of uh, President of the United States, Donald Trump. And why did that happen? Because FBI came to know that, you know, so Huawei is one of the leading uh, technology provider in terms of chips and internet technology. So all the technology you name 3G, 4G, 5G, Huawei has the sole monopoly over it and a lot of computer chips as well. So they provide technology with that. And they started to, you know, actually create chips for Intel's, AMDs and all other companies around the world with some kind of a malware in it where they could actually get access to the data with whatever FBI or any other security intelligence agency was actually doing it. Right. And by 2021, there'll be over 2 million cybersecurity positions that go unfilled. So guys, if you're looking forward to build your career or learn something new, blockchain and cybersecurity is the way to go. I mean, absolutely. Because data has emerged as a new oil, uh, there has been a lot of uh, challenges with data privacy, data breaches, and everybody just wants to you know, protect their data. So data computing and data is the future. Uh, and you know the cybersecurity spending is to exceed by dollar one trillion by 2025. Whatever hacks and whatever we are seeing today is just a beginning, and there are a lot of other things which is actually happening. So on a daily basis, right? If you just go to Google and type about cybersecurity breaches, the stats are like enormous, and a lot of things are not even reported because again it creates uh, some kind of a reputation issues to all these companies, and. Human attack surface to reach by 6 billion people by 2022. So by this, what I mean is that, right? So in the way, whenever uh, any cybersecurity hack or any security breach happens, it happens through human intervention. So by human intervention is that we may or might not be you know, directly participating, but sometimes we just see, so maybe you're working on an office system and we see some kind of a link and we just go and click it. So that way, some kind of malware which gets transferred to our devices, to our phones, and that is how a lot of actually hacks happen. And there have been certain incidences where actually, you know, hackers kind of, uh, you know, if you have seen a lot of sci-fi movies, they just kind of, you know, blackmail uh, people or blackmail employees or blackmail us to kind of, you know, share uh, our data or, you know, kind of just do some kind of a, put some pen drive into some system and, you know, all of that. So this is what I mean by, you know, human attack surface. Basically, humans uh, will be one of the human intervention will be one of the key causes for all the cybersecurity hacks. And, and you know, uh, there have been a lot of ransomware attacks, which we have seen in the past, right? And it's going to increase by 15x in the next few years, and it's expected to worsen, right? And, and this is astonishing, right? Over 70% of frauds is actually uh, conducted by insiders directly, indirectly, intentionally, unintentionally, right? As I gave you an example of where you just PC some link and just to kind of click it, you might just be putting by without you knowing some kind of a false pen drive on your system, right? And this way, this is actually a, a tremendous loss of data. So why world or why, uh, you know, internet of today, right? It's not able to, you know, what was missing in this entire thing and why this problem was not being able to solve. As I told you, right, for right now, all the business structures uh, or the business networks is like much, much complex. Every business is actually dependent on another businesses and that business is working with a lot of other businesses and a lot of other stakeholders. Hence, our complexity of our business structures or our business networks or our business ecosystem is actually much, much complex. And hence, you know, governance and trust is one of the key issues. And blockchain is exactly meant to solve these issues. Hence, blockchain is going to create a business network or a universal data infrastructure like never before, right? 
hence you know just to you know uh, kind of just to deep dive uh, you know more onto this problem statement right so most important challenge for any kind of a data audit or a security audit is whether how to prove that that data is the data is authentic original it's reliable it's stamp to free and it's from a credible source so imagine you are a big enterprise and i i assume that you all have been you know from lot of different uh, worlds lot of different professions lot of different enterprises and you could understand what i actually really mean right so imagine a network like a blockchain where you could see every single transaction in an encrypted manner and there is trust there is transparency and you know where the data has actually come from hence all these issues of trust governance would be solved most importantly it would eliminate all the manual processes dependency on the third parties uh, and also it would establish a long term integrity in digital supply chain right so i would actually go to google there have been a lot of amazing articles uh, or the amazing content about how actually blockchain could use in this uh, covid 19 to actually did it Uh, digitize the supply chain and you know establish more kind of trust and you know uh, more transparency right and most important and the ultimate question right how do i trust my data how can i prove it to management regulators courts audit etc etc have actually no transparency so this is a problem statement and how to and and you know why not cloud right so so you must be wondering that you know what what why you know uh, you know we have cloud we have you know mobile applications we have internet we have a uh, lot of other uh, technologies right and wh- wh- why not you know probably just take, keeping everybody on the cloud and giving everybody access data to actually solve it so just let me tell you right so with the emergence of cloud computing the most important thing which we need to remember is outsiders as well so actually becoming insiders remember guys this cloud network is also controlled by microsoft amazon facebook google cloud uh, or digital ocean or you know xyz multiple third parties meaning they have the private keys to get into the systems whenever they feel is actually right and we have seen lot of actually security breaches happening with amazon aws uh, happening with microsoft azure where actually big enterprises lost lot of their critical data and the case study which i'm going to talk about is of a world's largest shipping company called mers which was actually hacked and they lost they are with, with with they getting hacked and since cloud is more of a uh, what i would say is a centralized kind of an architecture right and all the data whatever goes in or comes out is not by default uh, encrypt, encrypted it's not a peer to peer network but of course you could use multiple clouds and create multiple nodes on the cloud to make sure that you have a uh, basically a peer to peer network and with the result of this hack right not only the company internally but all of their stakeholders which they used to work also got affected and the loss of this hack was potentially over 100 billion dollars plus so i'm going to talk about this this is going to be quite interesting right and also a lot of this uh, as i told you right you know cloud infrastructure is prone to phishing malware electronic fraud and most importantly in today's cloud computing we actually in internet world or a digital world right we need to prove the mathematical certainty right of cryptography uh, everything and even computers understand math which is just zeros and ones so you know which is actually becoming very difficult to have an independent audit trail right in digital society basically and the biggest question is that how are we going to do that with complex business networks and working in silos right because the major issues is with the governance and the trust so ultimately how blockchain helps creating resilience efficiency ease of deployment performance and security so by resilience what i mean is that since you imagine that you might think that this is such a huge business network right and what if some business participant goes down how it's going to work right so since it's remember as i told you that blockchain is a peer to peer network meaning all the other participants are actually acting as a node even if some nodes or some participants in a network is down you know since every participant is sharing the copy of a data and sharing the same copy of a truth it would become very easy to get access to the data from uh, basically your peer or your other participant all you got to do is just verify yourself with your user id and password basically your public key and private key efficiency right and you know with smart contracts we are actually talking about automating the contracts every single day businesses moves 
multi billions of dollars hundreds of billions of dollars are relying on third parties lying such as on banks for trade finance lying banks on letter of credit lying on lawyers and even you know when we even go to buy a property we rely on actually you know a lot of other agents and you know all of that and by using smart contracts by using uh, consensus we, we can obtain an efficiency by automating the process and by purely relying on the data the network itself would be able to determine the source of the data compute and then take a decision right and also ease of deployment so basically of course uh, you know blockchain is a quite complex technology but once all of these nodes are actually deployed it would actually become quite easy to you know scale the network since you are sharing a computation power from your peers and when more and more people coming together of course you know just imagine a scenario right where you know if uh, a lot of our computers are actually connected together right we could something like bit torrent right so you have peers and you have seeders so whenever all whenever you have more computers or a bigger peer to peer network you are uploading and the downloading speed must be much much faster irrespective of your own internet speed right so hence with blockchain with having more nodes you are going to have a high scalability you're going to have a better performance uh, and also most important is going to be easy to deploy other applications on the top of that hence blockchain is actually uh, you know kind of is creating a backbone between your application layer between your database layer where you know all the businesses or all your participants are actually connecting and creating their applications or creating their business network the most important thing guys security right since all the data is actually going in an encrypted manner and with every additional block coming onto the chain right it's as the terminology suggests block and chain right with every single data coming onto the network the security gets enhanced of this blockchain ecosystem and most importantly there is no single point failure right so if any of the network goes down or in a scenario if any of the networks also gets hacked you could just be able to retrieve data from your other participants so in any computation scenario so far there is not possible to bring down the entire network down it's basically like someone talking about that i can hack the entire internet that is not possible at all and most importantly confidentiality and you know data privacy is controlled by uh, the generator of the data right so any doubts uh, so far Shahas, any doubts we have? Yeah, we. Chats. Uh, much of it is on the cryptocurrency part and the concepts part. Basically, what blockchain is exactly all about. Okay, so cryptocurrency. Okay, so there is one question which is I think is uh, quite interesting from Arindam that he asked that what why blockchain is safer than Google Drive. Okay, so mm -hmm. basically Arindam, right? As I told you, all your Google, Facebook is basically a centralized system. It's not a peer-to-peer -peer system, and there have been cases where Google Drive is hacked. So say for example, if uh, you know Google can actually access all your data, can see your data, uh, and can actually. Uh, uh, use your data without your authorization so typically if you go on internet and you type uh, you i'm sure everybody must be following uh, edward snowden right and he released such mass surveillance been happening through all these systems and all the data whatever you actually put into the google or you know all of that or you share with anyone it's not actually uh, as an encryption by default and also it is prone to single point of failure so you see some incidences where only uh, certain Uh, users or only certain uh, percentage of users data is hacked but or compromised but not at the any other party right because of this this is primarily because of uh, centralization and also as i explained to you right the disadvantages of cloud computing so essentially a google drive is nothing but it's a, a, a cloud computing and also it has a lot of scalability challenges so if you have to think from an enterprise perspective right so just just do one quick exercise right just put some videos on your individual google drive accounts and just try to share it to multiple people or just maybe try to share it to 200 people right that won't stream because there is a bandwidth challenge as well uh, also other thing uh, is is that you know as i told you about scalability also uh, other thing is that you know data redundancy right so you cannot actually uh, kind of uh, use smart contracts or kind of have a consensus where you could actually connect multiple google drives together so let's say for example 
you have your Google Drive. I have my Google Drive, and I just want to make sure that uh, you know uh, I'm able to share my Google Drives of uh, data to you and you and you know other participants in an ecosystem. It's actually almost impossible to connect all of these uh, uh, Google Drives together because of a lot of security issues and because of trust issues, right? So, uh, uh, any other questions? There's a question from uh, Sahiti that how is the secure data ledger based on blockchain going to be helpful if the underlying data is fraudulent reported? Basically, if you're giving a fraudulent data, how can it be secure? Oh, well, see, the thing is, it's like, you know, if someone asks your name that, and I say instead of Prashant that I'm Shehaz, right? Can anybody can do anything to verify it? No, because the point is that if you have that intention of providing the fraud data itself, not only blockchain, but not any computational system in the world could do anything about it. So basically, right? But in blockchain, there is one advantage, which, you know, I would like to uh, actually share. So typically, let's say, uh, let's say, for example, in a typical scenario where I uh, actually told uh, that, you know, remember a quick uh, remittance use case, right? So I have to move $100 from India to the US, right? So typically, the job of a SWIFT as a middleman is actually to verify whether I have $100 or not and to check whether the receiver's account is valid and compliance or not. So say, for example, instead of $100, right, in a traditional system, if I share the data with the SWIFT that my balance is $150, SWIFT will accept it. Because the fact that SWIFT is actually not verifying my balances from the source, it's just fetching the data, whatever goes from my banking system. And as a result of that, there has been uh, frauds by Nirav Modi, right? We all know the Nirav Modi fraud, thousands of crore frauds. He was just able to do it by issuing fake letter of credit. That was purely a case of centralization where he would just bribe some of the Punjab National Banks and just get fraud data and the fraud certificates and just present it to the other party, the Hong Kong, and he used to cash it out. But if this had been in blockchain, all the balances would be checked in real time from the source itself. Remember, I told you it's purely based on a data computing. So even if I say to the network or in a blockchain network that my balance is $100, it's going to go and verify to the source itself that, okay, I received $10 from Shias, $50 from Naresh, $30 from you know X and $20 from Y. That's why I have $100. So if I even try to say it or any other participant in a system, just try to say that, okay, you know, the balance is 90 or 110, the system won't accept it because we are all checking the data from a primary source itself. Also, it's a peer-to-peer -peer computing, meaning I'm also connected to all my peers across an ecosystem. So in typically in a scenario of bank, right, where everybody is actually connected together, the system is also verifying and double checking from the entry or from the ledgers kept by my peers itself. So since we also bought this topic of cryptocurrency, right? So uh, cryptocurrency as in, you know, having a stable digital currency would actually spend uh, a problem of, you know, uh, double spending, right? So meaning if even uh, like, you know, uh, a double spending problem is a pro problem where typically if I have just $1, I won't be able to actually spend $2 or do any kind of these frauds or any of such things, which actually happens, right? Because, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are other lot of amazing examples of uh, cybersecurity breaches with credit card companies, uh, basically in the US. So in the US, or if you do a lot of international transactions, you don't uh, actually typically have this uh, concept of OTP, right? So a person could just basically send an MySQL injection to the server that the transaction is successful, transaction is successful, transaction is successful, the visa or a receiver's uh, switch or a gateway and your transaction would just get processed instantly. And there have been certain incidences. Uh, and also to give you further more example, there have been more incidences of ATM card frauds where people just used or someone, that, that was just recently, I think not even maybe a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe with Cosmos Bank where some X person just go to the multiple ADMs and just took it out 200 worth of crores from different, different accounts, right? So all these kinds of frauds is actually possible. And with blockchain, this would all have been prevented. Right? So any other questions? Um, no, you're good to go. Okay, perfect. Right. So coming to the case study, right? So this is a case study of ransomware attack on uh, AP Mall and Merck. So Merck is one of the biggest, uh, uh, I mean, the largest shipping companies all around the world. And, you know, just just imagine this situation, right? Merck was at the point of a hack. Merck was actually getting ready for a massive software update for its 80,000 employees all around the world. And all of a sudden, their server went down for 48 hours. 
and when they kind of did more uh, deep research right so as i told you guys right you know uh, that the whole world is actually not only moving towards you know nuclear war i think the bigger side warfare is internet and the biggest warfare would be a cyber warfare and countries like russia we have seen they have already started do it uh, with uh, us elections manipulations and a lot of other shady things right we all know that uh and then you know so russia actually employs sort of cyber warfare uh, they use ukrainian companies which actually work with these fortune companies and in this scenario they used a ukrainian company called linkos so linkos is again a third party software company which actually provides the entire accounts uh, kind of a management and a software to merge and the merge runs on their platform so uh, russia's uh, cyber warfare force they actually used uh link calls as a backdoor to get into the mers system right and what it actually did was that it encrypted all the computers from its boot records uh and as a result of which since uh, you know this virus or this malware or ransomware was so crazy that it actually spread it, it was actually actually exactly like a covid 19 or a corona which actually spread from uh, you know mers to a lot of other uh, participants like it's you know mondelez its customers mercedes benz fedex and all of these companies were actually attacked and they lost all of their data imagine guys a company like mers a company like mercedes a company like world's one of the biggest chocolate manufacturing company like mondelez uh, and you know uh, world's biggest uh, shipping and logistics company like fedex right they all were hacked and they lost all their data with just one ransomware attack So I'm going to talk about and dive much deeper on how blockchain would have prevented this to a lot of extent, right? So, uh, so this was data which is actually taken from an official report, but uh, actually, uh, you know, the losses were in some multi hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, but a lot of them was actually not disclosed, right? So, uh, you know, the pharma company Pfizer, which was one of their major customers, they lost eight seventy million, five hundred million shipping company, and you know, etc., etc., etc. So how did it occur? You know, the biggest question is: Was it an insider mistake? Was it because of some ignorance? Was it because of centralization? Was it planned? What is it? What? 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 And they have been still thinking today on how did this occur, basically, right? And what is the key lessons learned out of this, right? It's very important to know your critical cyber asset, and your critical cyber asset is only data. You need to do a regular monetary check on your cyber asset. Uh, you know, your data. You have to do. uh kind of you know testing penetration testing vapt and all of that and most importantly the thing is that since this is a very supply chain is a very very complex system as i told you right there are like hundreds and you know lots of lot of participants are involved in particular transaction in a scenario where of an international shipping where the goods has to go from point a to point b there is at least 25 different participants are involved hundreds of documents are shared and even if a loophole is among the one participant or is is within the system of even one participant it would make or it would actually cause trouble to the entire network right so the whole uh, idea is that we need to actually you know monitor and make sure that our network is secure but so so after this hack right musk actually created a blockchain platform which is called trade lens so trade lens is an essentially an open source uh, global supply chain management and a blockchain platform and they created a business network right as i showed you in my initial slides right getting all the participants onto a same ecosystem creating hundreds and hundreds of nodes and today they process millions of transactions every single day so they are actually able to automate the entire process make sure all the documents are actually shared in a transparent manner all the data or all the documents which is actually viewed by the customs uh viewed by the ports viewed by the receiver parties the banks the insurance companies is the same copy of the data and the same copy of a truth they could actually check how their data is moving and how their assets are actually moving right across and this is one of the amazing examples of these case studies and guys remember right you know a lot of companies were already actually pitching to you know these companies to kind of you know go blockchain create all their systems and they didn't listen and they actually realize after going towards or going through the hack and then they come up came up with this amazing solution called trade lens so trade lens is essentially as i told you is a supply chain management blockchain platform uh where all participants are connected and also the biggest advantage is that of this network is that as every single data whatever goes into the system is goes into an encrypted manner 
uh, and the most important thing is that every participant is able to control their own data. Every participant knows the origin of the data, the source of the data, and all the data is actually immutable. So meaning that I cannot, so a lot of frauds in supply chain or trade finance, how it happens is that I would share a document X with, you know, participant A or a bank Y and I would share another document or post that document and share it to an insurance company, right? Because these two guys, an insurance company and a bank in a traditional scenario, in today's scenario, are actually not connected onto each other, right? And why would they connect? Because because they see there'd be a lot of trust issues, there'd be a lot of uh, issues in terms of privacy, their data, and you know, all that. And creating a blockchain network on the top of their existing systems, where everybody is able to, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, shake hands with each other, is a much, much viable solution. And if, and if you know, multiple participants in the networks even get hacked, the beauty of this network is that they'd be able to retrieve data instantly because it's a peer to peer network and every single participant is storing the same copy of a data. So if you want to know more about this, you could actually go on uh, to the tradelines.com website and you know uh, all the details about this and how it works and its architecture and you know all of that. So this is a quick uh, summary of how actually hack forced one of the world's largest shipping industry to adopt blockchain. And today, all the big shipping companies, all the major ports around the world, all the insurance companies, the banks are actually using chain lines as a solution. And with this, they are able to get, you know, tamper-proof data, drawn reputed data, uh, which is uh, actually cannot be modified. Every participant is able to sharing the same copy of the truth. The data is able to be verified without any dependency on the third parties. They are able to leverage the power of a smart contract where they are able to achieve efficiencies as high as you know 99%, meaning all their transactions, all their verification, which were actually used to take some you know days and some weeks, is actually made real time because purely on consensus, purely using smart contracts, purely using encrypted data computing. And even if the entire uh, you know participant, or let's say even in this uh, scenario, uh, you know in this trade lines, even if let's say for example. Merce gets hacked again or even a Mercedes gets hacked again, that would not affect their peers or that would not affect their participants, right? Uh, and also they will be able to retrieve their data at a much, I mean, retrieve their data without actually being this loss. So had they implemented blockchain, they wouldn't have incurred any loss of these data, right? And there'll be more provenance, audibility and privacy. So. You know, uh, just a quick thought process on actually, you know, uh, understanding that where uh, you need blockchain and why your organization should consider using blockchains. So there are the quick uh, questions on your left and also a flow chart uh, on your right, right? So one of the most important questions to answer for your participants is that uh, what your basically stakeholders is that does the solution require a database? I assume yes for every single uh, solution. Where there'll be multiple writers inputting or updating the information, of course, yes, because business networks are complex, and in any, most of the use cases, you would at least work with three, four, or five uh, on an average participants, where you would be sharing multiple data, where you'd be editing a lot of data, and you know, all of that. Uh, and then, is there a lack of trust among participants? Yes, of course. So this is one of the most important questions to answer, right? Because most of the times, you would not want to give direct access to your database to any of your parties, right? And if there is an intermediary, of course, in most of the transactions, you have intermediaries uh, and rules, right? So do you need a consensus to achieve this? Do you need some kind of governance rules, which has to be consistent over time and data? So in terms of data, do you need a transparency in terms of transactions? Is that your important feature? Uh, do you need an immutable, uh, auditable uh, records or a database? or other transactions is dependent on multiple stakeholders? If the answer is yes for most of the questions, and if the answer is yes for all of these questions, then 10 on 10, you need blockchain. But if somewhere in between, you don't need blockchain. I mean, you still need blockchain, but uh, you know, it's not that you need to have a blockchain for everything. Right? So this is also a quick flow chart, right? So, okay. So there are a lot of other uh, use cases like you know blockchain for health, data privacy. You could use blockchain for power grid, uh, where you could actually kind of, you know, transparently see how you are being built for consuming the energy, right? Like, and all of that. 
for gas, trash, water, economy, health, transportation, governance, public safety, like that. So you could think of implementing blockchain across, as I told you, wherever you think there are multiple stakeholders, where you think data is important, wherever you think privacy is important, and most importantly, where you think that security is most important. So these are a few of our more uh, blockchain uh, cyber security use cases, right? Uh, in physical supply chain, secure record management, IoT management and control, cloud management and control, digital life cycle management. So in physical uh, supply chain management, right? If let's say, for example, you want to identify the source of any of the counterfeit products, like for example, uh, a case of medicines, right? I mean, across the globe, right? A lot of expensive medicines, one third medicines actually coming into the systems are fake. And there has been death of millions of people all around the world, losses worth hundreds of billions of dollars to the companies. And they are actually not able to track, uh, you know, uh, how this actually coming into the system. These are all very complex use cases, guys, which we actually discuss uh, in our blockchain architect programs where, you know, uh, deep diving is quite necessary, but you could use blockchain for that and uh, all of that. Uh, and also, you know, managing the records where you have multiple stakeholders, you have a federated record processing, uh, and you need to have a single version of a truth, and most importantly, uh, audit where and how and what, why, uh, all around the data. And IoT management and control, right? Say, for example, just take a home, as I give you an example of smart cars, right? It's again an IoT enabled device. Uh, I give you an example. Uh, let me give you another example of smart home or connected homes, right? So, uh, Let's say, for example, you use Honeywell systems for your smart homes. And what if Honeywell gets hacked? All homes around the world will get hacked. But if it's on a blockchain network, right, we are avoiding single point of failure. Uh, Honeywell is just a company which is operating this network. Every This is a purely a peer-to-peer network, meaning one participant is actually connected to one of the participants. And when and where more and more data is generated, the chain or the data chain becomes much bigger, much stronger. It's something like a chain reaction. And to break it, a person would require a brute force computing, which is actually much powerful than this. And it is not uh, actually you know, possible. Uh, in your cloud management and environment and control to have decentralized capabilities, to uh, streamline even, to define a lot of correlations, baseline comparisons, There's a lot of uh, technical stuff and digital life cycle management. Right. So what is so basically, you know, uh, if you are if your enterprise is small or your startup and you know all of that, and you don't want to uh, actually you know have more complex systems and just want to start with the basics. So here are the few tips uh, on how you could actually prevent uh, your know, cybersecurity hacks and attacks uh, within your own systems. So. So you could do a periodic network traffic analysis. So uh, meaning network traffic analysis is like, for say example, if you get certain traffic from certain IPs, right, and you see, uh, uh, you know, an attack or a, a network access coming from unauthorized IPs, you could actually go uh, and deep dive them and, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of track it. You could do a lot of packet analysis, protocol analysis, traffic and flow analysis, device and system logs, port and vulnerability scan. So port and vulnerability scan is most important thing and security information and even management logs. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tools also available on the internet which you could actually use uh, to kind of, you know, uh, do it. So one of the amazing uh, tools uh, was basically is from uh, Palo Alto Network. So if you go on the website, you would find that tool to actually use it. I think they provide some free trials so you can just use that. So the biggest question is, would Edward Snowden would be able to hack the entire FBI if it was on the blockchain? Right. Uh, answer is actually no, because keyless uh, signatures like a public private key cryptography, uh, your decentralization, peer to peer network and blockchain would actually make it almost impossible. To so, uh, guys, uh, any quick questions? Shahaz. No, you can go ahead. Well, uh... Okay. So, uh, guys, uh, I'm actually surprised that. Uh, yeah. that there are no much questions. Okay, uh, so thank you so much, guys, for you know amazing feedback. So if you're looking forward uh, to kind of you know develop blockchain as your career, so Snapper has started this initiative. Uh, just a minute. Can you just specify more use cases on it? There was a so a question from Sajid. Okay. Second. Just like go back a bit more.
Okay, so uh, Sagar, you could use blockchain for e-governance. So for e-governance, like your property record. So uh, today, if you understand, uh, you know, in terms of public service delivery, or, or if you understand the voting right, uh, it's dependent on a lot of these machines, and you know, we hear uh, certain things where you know these machines are man- manipulating. Uh, Prashant, Prashant, it's more specific towards the cyber security part. The use cases. Is it? Oh, okay, so. As in cybersecurity part, as in what use cases? So, can you? I think I'll just unmute. Uh, it's Sagar, right? It's Sajid. Sajid. Yeah, Sajid is. Yeah. Hey, Sajid. Hi. Uh, yeah. uh, in fact, uh, my question is uh, later specifically to cybersecurity. Would like to uh, hear much more. Uh, you know, uh, if you could touch upon a bit on the use cases that which. Um, which can help in cybersecurity. Maybe yeah, so uh, I think I just discussed, right? I mean, you could use for your physical supply chain, uh, securing your records. Uh, if your enterprise is running out of these IOTs, uh, you could do that. You could use also for cloud management and control, like uh, node setup, uh, creating a network, uh, and then you know deploying uh, smart contracts and all of that, and also digital lifecycle management. So it's actually much, a lot of things actually in detail. So probably, you know, we could just uh, uh, take it actually, you know, offline, but you could just have a quick read of it. And if it gives you a much uh, idea or all of that, just let me. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Oh, there was a question for soccer. Is it possible to hack system if big, a few big mining firms join their hands and take care of a 50% blockchain? That's about the 51% attack. Yeah, uh, I think in that case, yes, 51% attack is possible, but nobody would like to do a 51% attack. So uh, let's say for an example of this uh, use case of, uh, you know, rumors, right, where they actually work with hundreds of parties all across, right? Why would someone like to actually hack? Because uh, hacking or manipulating a data or something like that would create a lot of the reputation issues or trust issues. Uh, and also... Uh, uh, and also, uh, in a uh, lot of uh, scenarios, right, I mean, specifically when I talk about this enterprise uh, blockchain scenario, nobody would actually like to kind of go for a 51% attack. But yes, you are right, if there is a 51% attack, uh, hacking of blockchain or manipulation is possible because there is uh, consensus in it. But uh, of course, uh, you could have a lot of other types of consensus proof of stake, uh, delegated proof of stake, uh, proof of elapsed time. So there are multiple types of consensus to actually, you know, prevent this kind of 51% attack. Uh, but yes, actually, uh, you know, but a lot of people in a scenario, there, there is, I mean, the likelihood of having a 51% attack is actually low. So it's like something like in this use case saying that, you know, if they are like, I think in today, trade lines is running over 2,000 nodes uh, all around the world. So it is like, you know, 1,100 nodes, which means 1,100 participants in a network have certain kinds of intentions to do some kind of fraud or something like that. And they would actually come together and hack the network. I don't think that is possible in any scenario. So I think someone has raised their hand. Okay, just let me unmute. So I think I just saw uh, someone raising their hand. Okay. Is it Rohan? Oh, okay. Yeah, Rohan. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. sir, uh, sir, my question is, which, which kind of uh, language is uh, best for uh, smart contract? Okay. So basically for smart contracts, right, there are two kinds of, uh, you, actually every blockchain has its own language, but essentially, uh, fundamentally, they are using technology like uh, JavaScript, uh, Golang, uh, chain code uh, for Hyperledger, uh, Solidity for Ethereum. Of course, again, all these languages uh, are, you know, different, different. And uh, sir, uh, sir uh, I will learn already Solidity, but new language is coming soon, which is uh, Viper. Uh, sir, it is better. Sorry? Uh, but I am already learning in Solidity, but a new language is coming soon, which name is Viper. Or Rohan, actually, there is some disturbance uh, at your side. Uh, would be good if you can just type in the question uh, to me or Shikha, and uh, we'll be happy to answer that. 
सर एक्चुअली आई विल टेल अबाउट द वाइपर व्हिच इज कमिंग सून सो मतलब व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मतलब इज इट इज इट इजी टू सॉलिडिटी एक्चुअली आई एम मिसिंग योर क्वेश्चन आई एम देयर इज सम डिस्टरबेंस एट योर साइड आई एम सो सॉरी रोहन आई एम अनएबल टू हियर इट वुड बी बेटर आई आई टेक योर क्वेश्चन एंड टू शिहाज और मी एंड विल बी हैप्पी टू आंसर ओके एनी अदर क्वेश्चन गाइस uh so guys if you want to know uh, more about blockchain you could visit our blog uh, snapperbus.com it is like a bloomberg for blockchain for world we share a lot of use cases on how uh, you know blockchain could actually um, help in supply chains frameworks and you know a lot of cool stuff we also stream a uh, lot of cool content uh, 24 into 7 from blockchain and the crypto world is one stop platform for all your blockchains and uh, cryptocurrency knowledge and also i was telling you that uh, you know one of the key problems when we started snapo we realized was you know hiring right blockchain professionals uh, and you know hence we uh, started indian blockchain institute the whole idea of indian blockchain institute is to create a community of skilled blockchain professionals we believe that with blockchain we are moving from internet of information which is web 2.0 to internet of value which is web 3.0 where we are going to exchange value in the form of data and blockchain is going to form the backbone of the entire economy uh thanks we you know provide a lot of custom curated programs for people looking forward to build their jobs upskill themselves we do a lot of free workshops so if if you, if you guys any of you from representing some colleges uh, or from some enterprises we'd be happy to do free workshop you could just go to our offerings Uh, and go to corporates, academics, and there will be a quick form which uh, you could actually fill, and our team will get back to you in doing the workshop for free. And also, if you're looking forward to build your career in the blockchain, right? So, blockchain is a good career to build. Uh, we offer live instructor-led courses. Uh, we have a team of dedicated faculties uh, paying one-on-one attention. So, you could choose any of your career based on your expertise, guidance, and you could also visit IndianBlockchainInstitute.com. Uh, drop in mail, uh, create your account. Uh, and uh, also you know schedule a free counseling session with one of our experts uh also uh, we are doing more webinars uh, upcoming there we are doing a lot of bunch of free upcoming webinars our next webinars uh, is uh, on you know facebook libra and its challenges which is scheduled on 13th we have card three quarter blockchain success stories and you know some q and a around blockchain certification so you could just visit indian blockchain institute sign up for free webinars uh, and also uh actually i think uh shehas next week right we are doing next weekend we are doing a introduction workshop on blockchain right yeah we are going to do it on next weekend okay cool so uh, also we are going to send you some links uh, over the mail uh, for our next workshop uh, which is an introductory two day workshop that's going to cover a bit about cryptocurrency is going to cover a bit about blockchain how it works uh, technically at a very fundamental level so you could just uh, also sign up for that and also have uh, you could also add me on linkedin prashant surana jain uh, i have also published one cool stuff i know this is something which is absolutely crazy but i have published my few stuff on how blockchain will save the world so if you want to connect with me you can connect with me on linkedin uh, you could also you know uh, drop me go there and drop me a message and i'll be glad to answer and just read your stuff share some of your suggestions uh, and like guys looking forward to build a vibrant community a community of uh, you know a decentralization a community where we are able to establish trust in the form of data and a community where we control the data and an absolutely a happy world right so any other questions guys otherwise we'll sign off yeah it's our pleasure thank you so much uh, you know uh, everyone uh, for you know joining in tuning in and it was really uh, you know my pleasure to you know uh, host you guys all today so thank you so much looking forward to more sessions keep spreading the knowledge keep sharing and let's create a blockchain world you know this is being something which is very astonishing to me that as per several studies and reports only 5 to 10% of the people are actually employable by that what i mean is that only 5 to 10% of the working class or the working people have the right skill set to be employed and this is one of the major hindrances leading to unemployability and the only way to overcome is upskill yourself with rising competition upskilling has become one of the key priorities 
and understanding this fact you know IBI has come up with an exclusive program for the students which we call it blockchain plus internship program so this blockchain plus internship program will help you to learn in depth about blockchain technology working on several projects creating decentralized applications along with an internship in snap of future tech so in this entire program you're going to learn the entire product life cycle development what goes into enterprise grade applications and you know solutions and production and this program is basically for students this is about 2 to 3 months program and it is a live instructor led program so any person from around the world can participate in this program can sign up and will also get an internship appointment letter with snap of future tech so you're going to work with the industry leading faculties you're going to get a lot of mentorship during the program and also get a lot of hands on experience to learn about creating your own product So even if you're looking forward to be an entrepreneur this is the right program for you because you know what goes into the product development what is the thought process what kind of a business model you should think about and most importantly how is the product life cycle development you need to always hear your customers out so this program is exclusively aimed at students primarily freshers who are looking forward to land their dream job and build their career in the technology space so blockchain is one of the most paid skills in demand it's a number one skill in demand it's the best time to learn blockchain and this is only one of a kind industry program which will help you not only learn but also get internship so at the end of the program you're going to be evaluated by your faculties and get an internship letter from snap of future tech which is one of the leading enterprise blockchain companies so this program has will cover ethereum hyperledger and also internships so you're going to learn a lot of about ethereum which is a public blockchain solidity how to create these centralize application create your own tokens write your own smart contracts along with hyperledger ecosystem and how to create go uh, you know create a network you are going to learn about golang kubernetes dockers and so on and so forth so this is really really exciting program this program is exclusively for you so please sign up as we have limited seats available for this thank you so much and have a good day